Hi, Vancouver Opera. My name is Luca Calvada, and I am here with another one of our Ulanda M. Paris Young Artists alumni, Micah Schroeder. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us all the way from halfway around the world in Berlin. That's right. <laughs> so, okay, Micah, I'm going to jump right into the hard hitting questions and ask you okay. from one baritone to another. Is the baritone voice the best voice? No. <laughs> Please so me. no. Should I give you my reasons? Okay. Um, I think it's not the best because a lot of the repertoire is not that hard, mm. which means that to stand apart, you have to be so good. Mm -hmm. For example, like when you're a tenor, a lot of the repertoire it's really hard. So if you can just sort of do it, yeah. you win. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think even kind of how it's written as well, the tenor voice just seems more impressive. And so Yeah. The, yeah. I mean a teacher once said to me as a lyric coach, one of the most important things for you to be able to do is to sing in your middle voice and sound really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so when that's your goal, like everything's just about like beauty and perfection. And that's part of your range. Totally. Who is your, your favorite baritone, like from history or living to listen to? Um, I don't know. Hard question. Sometimes I like to listen to people who are not far away from me. So I'm not feeling my brain something that's not achievable for me. So two people I really like for alive are Stefan de Kou uh -huh. and Simon Kini side. This is like a popular choice. Yeah. Um, also Joe Finley. Yeah. He's, He's kind, kind of, of a bass player, but you know, yeah. everyone knows him. Yeah. And Canadian too. That helps. Oh, and <laughs> Russell Braun. Russell Braun. Got him. Also yeah. Canadian legend. Yeah. Agreed. Um, if, okay, I have a, a completely unrelated question. If you Go were ahead. to get a opera related tattoo, what would you get? An opera related tattoo. <laughs> I don't know. You could go for something super cheesy like like a lyric to to your favorite aria, but Ooh. I don't know. I once knew someone who got a tattoo like on their stomach or something, a, a woman and she got a tattoo that said Mexico. But then she became a surprise. <laughs> um, I think I just wouldn't get an related tattoo. I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I think, no, no. <laughs> out of protest, out of protest. <laughs> um, so you moved to Germany. That's right. And was that um, decision based on pursuit of your music career? For sure, yeah. Um, I had a bit of a gap in my school one year and my current husband, I um, also had a gap. He was a singer as well. Um, and we had a big chunk of time where we didn't have any engagements. And so we just sort of went for it. Um, like many singers who come over here, there's, you know, I would still say it's really competitive, but there's just more people to support. There's more jobs. It's a richer market than what we have in Canada. Yeah, absolutely. Just like the, the, the density gets, like the, the, there's an integration of the culture where people are actively producing more, is my perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting, you know, we hear this conversation in Canada a lot, like, how do we keep opera alive? Um, and I just don't know if that conversation is happening the same way here, because this is where opera actually comes from. Mm -hmm. So there's just more of it here. You know, even in Canada, we have like 12 opera houses or something, or opera companies. You could send emails to all of them in like an hour. Mm -hmm. In Germany, there's like 60 plus houses, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so there's just more. Yeah. Outside of music, how does Berlin differ from Vancouver? Oh, how does it differ from Vancouver? Mm -hmm. It's not as pretty. Okay. Um, <laughs> Points to Vancouver. But similar to Vancouver, it's a really multi multicultural place. You know, when you go on the subway, you hear 
you know, five languages, not, none of which is English or Um So that's something that I've used, and that sort of reminds me of Vancouver a little bit. There's just different people from different cultures and ethnicities and speaking different languages all the time. Um, else does it differ? The weather is actually kind of the same. Yeah. That's not a difference. <laughs> um, the weather's kind of the same. It's kind of, it's pretty mild in the winter. It's gray and cold. And, but in fall, it's spring and summer, it's nice, but not too hot. Yeah. And what would you say that you miss the most of, from Vancouver, having lived away for a while? Because you, you, you were here for the Young Artist Program, and then you kind of did a world tour and then ended up in Germany, right? <laughs> I wouldn't say a world tour, but that's right. Uh, but I grew up in Vancouver too, right? Like my parents, I grew up in Moody, so I have lived in Hillary a lot. Um, what do I miss? My heart wants to say good Chinese food yeah, or good sushi. I feel like in Berlin, you go for any Southeast Asian food. It's like some fusion restaurant that sells Vietnamese food and sushi and Chinese food. And that's not yeah <laughs> but I think that is something that you can count on basically like anywhere or I wish you'd say anywhere in the world but a, a lot of western um, countries a lot of uh, European countries that there will be at least a form of Chinese food oh yeah like, but it's oh. like not as good <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good yeah, so this is a this is a, a reminder to everyone living in the greater Vancouver area to cherish your, your local food. <laughs> oh, and dim sum. Oh, so there's no dim sum. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would I would definitely miss that as well. Oh, okay. Now I need to have some dim sum. Um, so you were part of the Arts program with Bank Proper, and mm-hmm. since then you did a few different Young Arts programs. Um, mm-hmm. in the States as well as in France. Uh, how would you say that Young Artist Programs help singers? And I'll also challenge you with how do you think they could be improved? Hard question. Um, I mean, I think they help us because we get connections. You know, any opportunity you have to meet people who can give you more jobs or people who can tell people who can give you your jobs that you're awesome is, is great. Um, I think a way that they can be improved is that sometimes there's this focus in young artists program on our artistic development, on our technique and our artistry and whatever, but there's not always a consistent influence in, in young artists program. So often when you're in a young artist program, you're working with a clinician or a teacher or a coach for a short period of time, whether it's you know a few weeks or longer a few months mm-hmm. sometimes it's not long enough to make an impact where you can disassemble the blocks of yourself and put them back together so i think myself included and other people that i know that have done your programs and worked with people at programs and felt like they were kind of in pieces and blocks and forth and that they weren't able to put them back together before they were finished out on their way yeah, yeah, I, I love that. I love that metaphor. So I think that's you're looking at the, the greater arc of someone's professional and artistic journey, and it's impossible to 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 break that up and feel like you can make these big leaps in your development in such such a short amount of time. So, mm-hmm. and this is why I think it's so interesting to to check back in with the alumni of Young Artist Programs to see how they have used those steps to build and see if they have had a chance to reassemble those blocks, as you said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you, how would you say that you stay motivated as an artist in reassembling those blocks? Uh... I think for me, when I consume art that is outside of our business realm, that really stimulates me. Uh-huh. Uh, there was a time when I was always consuming classical music, always listening to music, always going to opera. But I mean, maybe it's just gotten older. 
and my ADHD brain wants something new and different. But I think when I listen to music that's different or go to a museum or a gallery or a play or just something else, that sort of gives me something I can bring into my music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's, that's not important. Um, you kind of touched on the last question that I'm going to ask you, but um, I'll, I'll pose this as like a, a theoretical open-ended question. What is inspiring you as an artist right now? What is inspiring you as an artist right now? <laughs> my husband's <laughs> pointing at my dog. No. <laughs> um, not my dog. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Right now I'm listening to the Kelly Clarkson Christmas album. Get it. <laughs> November begins and I'm like, Christmas music. So I guess that. I really like Christmas music. The cozy vibes. <laughs> the cozy vibes, the classic tunes. It's good. Yeah, I love that. Well, thank you so much, Micah, for chatting with us. It's so nice for our Vancouver Opera community to check in with our ULAD M Paris Young Artist Program alumni to see how they are doing, to see how the people that they saw on stage and continue to support uh, how well they are doing out in the industry and in their personal lives. So nice to check in and we hope to see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. you. It was my pleasure.